I'm Sylvia Sprinkle Hamlin, Director of the Forsyth County Public Library. Welcome to the Congress School Road Branch Library. On behalf of the library and the Congress School Road Branch Library, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the kickoff of the Great Expectations and initiative of the Kate B. Rimmer's Charitable Trust. The library is honored to host this announcement and I'm especially excited, can't you tell? <laughs> that so many parents and children have joined us today. Early childhood education is truly a community effort and we are excited to be a part of this initiative. It is now my privilege to introduce Karen McNeil Miller, president of the Kate B. Rivers Charitable Trust. A former teacher and principal, Karen has always pushed for increased investment in education because she knows firsthand that a robust early edu child education program can help close the gap in access to opportunities. Karen? Good morning. I think this podium was made for one of the children. <laughs> Perhaps. So thank you, Sylvia, for that warm welcome. And for those of you who have not been to this library before, isn't it gorgeous? Yes. It is just one of many gorgeous libraries in Forsyth County. So I was talking with someone earlier. If you have not been to every library, you should do a library tour, and because you would certainly enjoy it. So today we do want to kick off Great Expectations. And this is a 30 to $40 million effort that the Kate B. Reynolds Charitable Trust is beginning as an investment to prepare our youngest residents for lifetime success. The mission of the Kate B. Reynolds Charitable Trust is now and always has been to improve the quality of life and quality of health for financially needy North Carolinians. We've always been committed to the success of young people, but this effort marks our greatest, most significant, and most focused effort in our almost 70 year history. The goal of Great Expectations is that we want at least, and I just say at least, at least 90% of all children from financially disadvantaged families to enter kindergarten having met every age appropriate milestone, social, emotional, physical, linguistic, you name the milestone, we want them to have, to have met that. And we want to do that using five core priorities. Improving family and child health, improving self-regulation and self-functioning of both the, the adult and the child, improving parent-child interactions or a, a caregiver, adult caregiver child interactions, supporting children's social um, I'm sorry, their, their language, their oral language and vocabulary development, and then strengthening families and family systems. And we think doing those five things across these 10, next 10 to 15 years with all of the partners that we, we need to have at this table with us, we look forward to just having this community be a beacon for not only the rest of the state, but the rest of the nation for how you develop a system for success for young people. At the trust, we believe that it is the community's responsibility, not just the trust responsibility, not just the responsibility of teachers, but the community's responsibility to establish that effective system that supports all families. Now, why would we need something like Great Expectations in this county? Well, sadly, thousands of young children just like the ones you saw making all that noise a few minutes ago. Sadly, thousands of them enter kindergarten already behind or very likely to, to fall behind their peers. In fact, in this county alone, 2,400 students enter kindergarten every year unprepared for the challenges that the school has to offer them. And those children from low-income families are the most likely to be affected in this way. In Forsyth County, 54% of the children under six live in families whose income is 200% of poverty or below. 
and a full 63% qualify for free and reduced lunch in our school system. And so again, we think this has to be a community effort because it's important to us all. So it takes the community and it takes all kinds of partners. It takes not only governmental partners, agencies, families themselves, individuals, our faith community, business community, it's gonna take them all. We've got some representatives from a couple of those stakeholder groups here with us today. But before I introduce our couple of other speakers, I wanna take a moment, because it takes a community, and because it has to be in every, in every corner of our community has to feel this and believe this, I wanna take the opportunity to announce a couple of new grants that we're making. The first grant, Sylvia, if you would stand up, is to the Forsyth County Public Library. Yay. <laughs> so on behalf of the trust, I want to announce a $330,000 grant. Yay. <laughs> which the library will establish Great Expectation Corners in seven libraries and in two mobile units. And in those corners will be age-appropriate materials because we want the youngest children to start out loving the idea of reading, loving the idea of language and literacy, and get completely used to and just feel completely at home in the library. So we are so excited yeah, for you. And we can't <laughs> wait to, to continue this part of the In addition, I'd like to announce uh, a grant to the Mississippi Forsyth County Public Schools. I know we've got some school system folks here somewhere. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so the trust is also making a $640,000 grant to the school system to improve the playgrounds at 23 Title I elementary schools. Exercise and kids and movement has benefits far beyond the physical. And because these playgrounds are open to the community after school, this is also a community benefit. And so we're so excited for the partnership we already have and will continue to have for many years with the school system. And thank you, Dana, for being here. <laughs> We've made a grant to an organization called First Book. Do we have First Book representatives here? There she is in the back. Which is an organization focused on uh, providing ongoing access to free or low cost reading materials to educators um, for children in need. So this grant that we're making to them will allow First Book to provide a thousand educators with age appropriate, high quality, diverse books for preschools age children in financially disadvantaged areas. And they are also the ones who have provided books for us, books for you, to take with you um, today to give to a young person in your life. So thank you for what you all have. So two people here also joined to, to, to share with you about the importance of this work. First is Keisha Lucas. Keisha is a nurse with Nurse Family Partnership. Nurse Family Partnership is a program that works with first-time financially disadvantaged mothers from early in their pregnancy through their child's second birthday. And they provide support, uh, support medically, support in parenting, the, it's the array of services far, is far beyond what you could ever read on a piece of paper. Keisha also happens to be the longest serving nurse, family, partnership nurse in all of North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> Having been doing this for 12 years? Yes. For 12 years. And so she's going to tell you a little bit about that experience and what that means in the lives of children and families. And then secondly, we've got Leslie Hayes with us, who's the business banking division manager for the Carolinas region at Wells Fargo Bank. And although Leslie is employed by Wells Fargo, who is also our trustee, and we're excited for that partnership and that relationship. She also represents the many 
business organizations in our community who understand the importance of working with our earliest children and the benefit that has to this community, the, the long-term benefit it has to their client base and to their ability to be competitive um, with employees. And so I'm gonna ask first Keisha to come forward and speak and then Leslie. Thank you so much, Karen, for those kind words. Um, I just want to start off by saying that I did have a client that was going to come and speak first um, today. And unfortunately, because of a family emergency with her mom, she was not able to come and speak. Um, so I decided I would step up and speak <laughs> on her behalf. Um, first of all, I would like to say, like, Karen had mentioned, I've been doing this job um, now for several years, and I absolutely love working with my moms and my babies. Um, I developed this passion for wanting to help the vulnerable first time moms because I was also um, a young, low-income first-time mother. So I, I knew that I wanted to one day be able to inspire young women um, nurse Family Partnership is great for the community because this program does serve vulnerable first-time parents. The program allows nurses to deliver the support moms need during pregnancy to become knowledgeable and responsible parents. The relationship between the nurse and her client is very strong. It grows as time is spent with each other during the two and a half years that she is in the program. Our program serves moms that are 28 weeks gestation or less until their toddler turns two years old. Through extensive research conducted over more than 37 years, Nurse Family Partnership has proven, has a proven level of effectiveness. There are three goals that the Nurse Family Partnership delivers. The first goal is to improve pregnancy outcomes. During our home visits, we bring lessons that are interactive and informative to our clients. We give suggestions for having a healthy baby. For example, if a client smokes, we discuss the effects that it has on her, on her developing baby, her health, and ways to help her decrease or abstain from smoking. We also discuss the importance of breastfeeding, common discomforts of pregnancy, SIDS, shaken baby syndrome, and preparing for labor and delivery. All while discussing these different topics, the nurse helps encourage bonding between mom and the developing baby. Mothers are encouraged to read to their baby during pregnancy and throughout the child's life. Children's books are provided to our moms through first books, and they are encouraged to take their baby to the library. The second goal is to improve the child's health and development. Moms are urged to take their child to their well-child appointments. We monitor the child's growth by, and their development by assessing the baby at every visit. During our visits, we discuss the importance of play to our moms. Moms are encouraged to say nursery rhymes and sing to their baby. We bring out doll babies to their home visits and we get down on the floor and we actually have time where we play. And during this time, we are, are observing how they interact and play with their baby. The last goal is to increase economic self-sufficiency. Throughout the time that the client is enrolled in the program, we discuss goals. We encourage our moms to finish school, get employment, and any other goals that they have. We partner with local agencies and schools to help provide more resources for our clients. So as you have just heard, all of these outcomes contribute to preventing child abuse, reducing juvenile crime, and increasing school readiness. Thank you.
Wow, Keisha, I don't think I can top that because what I do every day doesn't even hold a candle to that. So thank you for what you do in our community. Um, my name is Leslie Hayes, and as Karen said, I'm here in Winston Salem. And the trust in Wells Fargo go back so far, and the relationship that we have means so much to us, as I hope I know it does to the trust. But I think the pride point that I want to say is the trust does great things. And to be standing here today um, with this and being able to help launch this is really an honor for me and for our company. And thank you for all that you do. This is uh, this is a game changer for our community. So um, pretty neat day that we're all here and we'll be able to look back and say we were here. Um, so I'm very happy to be here and actually just share just a little bit of how I think not only um, will our community benefit, but we will all know that this is important because it's our children and it's our future. And at Wells Fargo, one of our key foundation um, goals is to help close the achievement gap in our education. So this connection goes further than just the trustee position. It aligns with who we are as a company with Wells Fargo here in the community. And we know, as you know, that when you can start that young, that young baby to growing up those early years, the education that they start with is what's gonna propel them forward. And so not only is it a great thing for our community and our workforce when we go forward, but it's so important just for the health of our community as a whole. So partnering with, as a bank, partnering with agencies and nonprofits that do this kind of work, that's how we can all help. And I know other companies here in Winston-Salem have a big heart and a big um, connection to doing something that makes a difference. So as other companies learn about Great Expectations, Karen, this is one of those organizations and initiatives that I know people will want to jump, jump together with to invest in to make this a community that will not only have um, the health of our community, but when our children are growing up healthy and strong and being able to be productive citizens, it's just such a win-win for all of us. So as representing the business community, I can stand here and say that this is a great thing and we will all benefit and we will all uh, participate. But most importantly, it doesn't happen without the work of your team and then our community and all the other agencies and nonprofits that will that will participate. So to be here today um, to see this launch, we've all been hearing about it for a little while. We've known it's coming and to see it actually happen today is quite a, a wonderful moment. So I'm thrilled to be a part of it and just look forward to how we can all grow together in the community to invest and to see this make a difference and you can hear the little laughter outside i know we're going to make a difference so thank you karen for all that you do and for everyone in this community thank you, thank you very much. i just want to take a moment and emphasize you know the reason that we're focusing not only on the child but on the adults in their lives you know children should have child size problems. You know, he's touching me is a child size problem. Or she jumped me in line, that's a child size problem. Children shouldn't have to have the problem of homelessness. Or not having food in the house. Or being evicted, not having a home. Or worried about mom doesn't have a job. Those are not child size problems. And so we can't address and uplift our children unless we also make an effort to uplift the adults in their lives. Whether they be their parents, their caregivers, and the stressors that they face. Because so many of them have daily impossible decisions to make that affect their children. Do I go to work and leave my six, eight-year-old at home by herself? Or do I stay at home with my child and miss a day's pay? Do I pay the rent or do I buy the medicine I or my child need? And so also to the extent that we can help parents and families improve themselves to the extent that they reach the success that they define as successful, that also then automatically transfers to the child. And we know that once a family or a family unit or an individual overcomes, the po overcomes poverty, 
that those families don't go back. There's no recidivism. They stay uplifted. And so that's part of why this is a two or three generation approach and why it's 10 to 15 years because we didn't get here in a week or a month or a year and we won't, we won't be able to get out then. So as, as Leslie said, we've been working on this for a while. We spent the last couple of years designing a plan, deciding on what those five core priorities are, and now moving forward, we'll be working with an activating agency who will be on the ground here, who will be the kind of the glue that helps us pull this together. And again, because when I say us, I mean all the people in this room, everybody in this county, and people that aren't even here yet. It's going to take an effort, and we will bring the resources that we have to bear to make this successful. So before we conclude, I want to first thank the trust staff and the library staff for all that you have done to make this possible. This, this just does not happen. There's a lot of time and effort and work that goes into putting on an event, so thank you all for that. And I also want to introduce two people who will be um, very responsible for this work going forward. Joe Crocker, who's the director of our Poor Needy Division here in Forsyth County, and Alan Smart, back there, who is our vice president of programs. And so what I will do is I will ask, the, invite the two of them to come forward and answer any questions with me that you all have. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. You say the community and everyone is supposed to pitch in and help. Can you just be more specific? You know, as a community person, what can I do? Do I come to the library and volunteer? What specific there? Oh. Well, first of all, we just like the community, everyone in the community, to recognize the importance to them. If you don't have young people in your life, if you aren't a parent of a young child or a grandparent of a young child, you may think this has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with you. The whole future of this county rests on the children that are now two or three or four years old. And we have to prepare them as best as possible to contribute in this community. And so just the understanding of all community members, the importance to their lives and their future is part of the, part of the message. And then there, I don't even know if I can list all the things that people could individually do. <clears throat> there are more experts in the room you know, than me on that, but there are things any community member can do, educate themselves, volunteer, um, write their elected officials for support for early childhood efforts. <laughs> all of that. <laughs> but as well as knowing read you know, to a child yeah, yeah I was gonna say, as well as knowing what to do with the child when you encounter a child whether it's yours or someone else's kind of thing is how to interact with that child which is one of our core priorities we talked about so and there will be media events and there will be public announcements and there will be a, you know what we call a public awareness campaign that will go on that will inform um, you know individuals and organizations about uh, early childhood development and what happens during those stages of life so that will be an ongoing part of our Red Expectations initiative as it goes forward Good question. Well, if yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Another component of it, because I had an opportunity to do it, work with the child, and people going to do the reading, because they need the reinforcement, constant reinforcement, and they need to have an adult that is willing to commit the time and the energy to teach the children how to read. You can do this, but you still have to keep working with them. And you cannot make the assumption that this is going to um, be a be all, catch all. They need adults to come to the school and to teach the children. So I think part of what you're saying is every child needs many adults, many active, participating, engaged adults in their lives, whether it's the lady that sits beside them at church or the school bus driver, or who, mom, daddy, auntie, whoever, everybody, anytime you're interacting with a child, you're teaching them something. So ask yourself what you're teaching them, 
And it's what you're teaching them something you want them to learn. And if you keep that mindful, I think that will, that also, and I'm, as a parent of young children, they're not so young now, but young children, I remember sometimes thinking, where did they learn that? Oh, that was from me. <laughs> oh, that was from me. So they're learning. I, I get very angry when people say kids don't show up to school ready to learn. I've never met a child who's not ready to learn. They may not yet be ready, prepared to learn what you want to teach them at that moment, but every child is ready to learn and learning at every moment. And so we all have to be mindful of that. We'll be measuring the assess through a lot of methods. There are um, known assessments that that, that uh, pediatricians use, that child care workers use, that the uh, school system uses to measure the developmental um, uh, progress of children. We'll be using those as a, a starter and then measuring as they, hopefully they increase over the years. So if there are no other questions, I will invite you to enjoy some refreshments. Be sure and pick up um, books that have been provided by a Great Expectation Packet and books that are inside. And again, thank you all so much for coming. We look forward to transforming the lives of a generation. Thank you.